Okay, hello everyone. So welcome to today's lab A of introduction to operating system. And in today's lab, uh, we will be going through the condition variables. And if you have any questions about today's lab, then you can send an email to this address. Uh, so in this lab, we will learn about some uh, functions about these condition variables. So just like the mutex, the condition variable is another way to achieve the synchronization in the multi-threading programs. And uh, specifically, it can be used to implement the wake up enable multi-threading program, which means that uh, some thread in the program may want to sleep or may want to be blocked until some specific event happen. And when that event happen, then some other thread will wake up those uh, sleeping thread to resume the execution and also the processing. So to achieve that, uh, we will use the following function shown here. And the first function is that we can initialize a condition variable just like the mutex and different from the mutex, which use lock and also unlock functions to, uh, to set up the critical section in condition variable, we are using another set of functions, uh, which is the wait and also the signal. So the wait function is uh, basically to wait for some event to happen. And when that event is not true, then we can call this function to block the current thread until some other thread to, to wake uh, this thread up. And for the signal function, uh, when some event happen, and some threat detect that the, the, the event has happened and also there are some threat waiting for these events, then you can call the signal function to signal uh, the events and also wait uh, those, those threat who is waiting uh, to, to resume the execution. So before we, we can use a condition variable, we need to initialize it to a default states so that it can be uh, processed and also used by the functions. So uh, here we also have two ways to initialize a condition variable, just like a mutex. The first way is that we can use the constant, the static way here. So this p thread con initializer is a, is a constant uh, for a default state for a condition variable. So if you just assign this uh, constant to some condition variable uh, whose type is the p thread con t, then we can initialize this variable to a default state, and then we can use it to synchronize the program. And for the dynamic way, we can just use the function condition init function. So it takes two arguments. The first argument is the condition variable we want to initialize. And here it is a pointer. We just point, we just pass the address of the condition variable that we want to initialize to this function. And the second argument is actually a pointer to an attribute structure. So if you want to specify some attribute to this condition variable, for example, some behavior that you want to, uh, you want this condition variable to have, then you can specify those behavior in the attribute structure and then pass the address of this attribute structure along with the condition variable into this function. And then it will initialize the conditional variable based on your specification. But if you do not want to have any special uh, arrangement for this condition variable, then you can just use now. Then inside the function, if we detect that the attribute is now, then it will just initialize the condition variable using a default setting and just like the static way. So you can see that the dynamic way is just that we can uh, specify some behavior. And if you do not need to use it, then these two ways are equivalent. But for the function, for the p thread condition init, in, init function way, you also need to check the return code. So if the return code is zero, that, that means that uh, the condition variable has been successfully initialized. But if you use a, a non-null attribute structure, but that but, but some arguments, but some parameters in this attribute are invalid, then it may return a non-zero return code here, uh, which represent the cause of the error. 
and represent that the function cannot initialize the condition variable based on your configuration. So you may need to change some parameter in the attribute structure before you retry. And the use and the usage for this condition variable is that it can provide conditional access to a, to a critical section. So it has two interfaces. The first one is the wait function. It takes a condition variable and also a mutex associated with this condition variable. And the second function is the signal. So it just signal that an event has happened to wake up all the thread waiting for this condition variable. So here shows an example for us for a very simple program. So suppose that we have a main thread and also some other trial threads. So each trial thread will just increment the counter by one. And then in the main thread, we want to wait for all A true try threads to, to exit, to finish. So we want to wait until the X is greater or equal to A. So this is the simple program here. And to do this, uh, first, because we are accessing a share variable, the X here is shared by the main thread and also all the trial threads. So we cannot access it di directly. Otherwise, we can have some uh, conflict for the access. So before we access a share variable, we need to declare a mutex and also enter the critical section provided by this mutex using the lock and also the unlock function here. So uh, after we are inside the critical section, then we can uh, then we can manipulate the share variable. And because the main thread want to wait until all the all the A child thread has increment the counter and x great is greater than or equal to a. So before that condition uh, come true, which means that a x is still less than eight, then we need to wait. So we just call the condition wait function with the condition variable and also the mutex here. Then we can wait until someone uh, by waiting, we just we are just adding the main thread into the wait queue of this condition variable. So uh, by, by doing this, we can associate the, the main thread and also the condition variable so that uh, later some other thread can wake up, wake up the main thread using the condition variable and also the wait queue. And then inside the child thread, uh, because each trial thread will increment the counter by one, and be because, because this X is a share variable, then be before we increment the counter, we also need to acquire the same mutex and enter the same critical section protecting uh, the X here. So after we are inside the critical section, then we can modify the X by in incrementing it. So after the increment, then X might be greater than eight, then in, in that case, uh, we need to wake up the main thread to let, to let the main thread to recheck whether the, uh, whether the condition has come true and we can exit. So here we will just call the conditional signal function uh, with the condition variable here. So inside this, uh, this function, the main thread has already added itself into the way queue for the condition variable C here. So when you call the signal function with the condition variable C, then it will check the wait queue and find that the main thread is waiting for this condition variable. Then it will send some signal to it to wake up, wake up the main thread. And after that, uh, this child thread can, uh, can leave the critical section by calling the unlock on the mutex and then it is finished. Uh, and then for the main thread, uh, here after it is woken up by the trial thread, then it will return from this condition wait function and then uh, continue the execution. Here, here we, we should actually use a while because uh, the main thread can be woken up by the trial thread multiple times. So if you are using an if here, then uh, it, will, it will fall out of the uh, critical section after it is woken by uh, by one thread. So I will talk about this later. And this is also another example here. And we are using the condition variable to implement the, the join, also the exit function, just like the, the P thread one. But here we don't need to worry about the return value. We just want uh, the joining thread to wait for the exiting thread 
to exit before it continue. So to do this, we can also declare a global variable down here. So this variable can be shared by all the threads, including the, the joining thread, including the joining thread and also the exiting thread. So this DOM means whether the exiting thread has actually exit. So when the exiting thread call this function, then we will set a DOM to one, uh, meaning that it is it has exited and the main thread and the joining thread can continue. So inside the exit function, we will first uh, acquire the log for this mutex because we are modifying the global variable shared by the exiting thread and also the joining thread. And after that, we are enter the we enter the critical section. Then we can uh, set true to this down variable, meaning that uh, this thread has exited and the other thread can continue. So after we modify the condition, after we update the condition. Then we can also call the signal function to wake up all the thread waiting on this conditional variable. And then we can just unlock the mutex and leave the critical section. Then this, uh, this thread will exit. And for the joining part, uh, first, we also acquire the log for the same variable because we are accessing the DOM to know whether this child thread has exited. So here we are using a while because it can be uh, woken up spuriously. So we need to check uh, if this, uh, this condition is actually true before we, we want to continue. So if this uh, condition is not true, which means that the thread has not called the exit function to, uh, to terminate itself, then uh, the down will still be zero and we need to wait until it is set, it is set by the exiting threads. So we just call the function wait here. So, after this down is set to one and we are, we are woken up by the existing threads, then this loop condition will no longer be true and we will break out of the loop and also unlock the mutex and leave the whole function. So in this way, we can uh, implement an order between these two threads. We will only allow this joining thread to continue only if this uh, exiting thread has called this exit function to terminate it, itself. So this is a simple version for the uh, for the join and also exit function in the Peter library. But here uh, we are not dealing with that return value. So uh, we do not need to pass the return value from the exiting thread back to the joining thread. We just want to establish the, the order between them. So to run to, to actually run these uh, two functions, we will use a a function shown here. So in the main thread, main function uh, called by the main thread, we will just print some message. And also we will create the child thread using the p thread create function to run this child function. So after that, the main thread want to call the join function to wait for the child to exit. And for the child, it will just call the exit function to signal that uh, it, it has done and then return now to the p thread library to exit. And after that, after the, the trial exit, then the main will return from this join function and also the wait, wait function. So it will continue execution by printing an end here. So what you will see is that you will first see the parent begin line, and then you will enter the child because uh, the, the main thread is waiting for it to exit. Thing. And it will print the child before it exits. So you will see the next line you will see is child. And after you exit, then the main thread will resume from this line and then continue to print the parent end line. So you will see the parent begin followed by the child, followed by the parent ends. And this is the order we want to uh, have here. And there, there might be some questions about these condition variable functions. So the first one is that you can see in the condition made function, uh, we will use the condition variable to represent the wait queue. So we, we are adding the current thread to the wait queue for this condition variable. But we also pass the mutex into the function. So why do we need to pass this mutex here? So you can see uh, in, in the function where, that we, when we use the wait, we need to first 
acquire the law for the mutex because we are using the share variable to represent the condition. So before we can access the share variable, we need to enter the critical section protected by the mutex here. So uh, generally, before we call wait, we need to lock a mutex. But if we do not do anything and holding the mutex and to wait for the, the other thread to exit, then we are waiting with the mutex uh, locked. So when we are waiting, the mutex is locked by, locked by the waiting thread. So no other thread can enter the critical section and to modify this condition and signal it. So that's, that we call a deadlock because uh, the, the joining thread is waiting for the other thread to, to signal it. But it is locking the mutex so no other thread can enter the critical section and also update the condition to signal it. So in this way, it's this way it will be a deadlock and the program cannot continue execution. So before we sleep, we cannot, we cannot still hold that mutex. So in, inside the function, uh, inside the wait function, actually it will first unlock the mutex and then we are safe to sleep. And then between this, uh, between this line, then any other thread can enter the critical section and also uh, updating some condition to signal us. So after we are woken up by other thread, then the sleep function will return. Then we will acquire the lock again. So after we exit the wait, return from the wait function, we are still holding the lock. So you can see here, uh, we do not need to worry about unlocking and also locking the mutex when we are sleeping. Uh, they will be handled by the condition wait function. All we need to do is that we will just pass the mutex inside the wait function and then inside the function, uh, it will handle everything for us. So this is why we need to uh, pass the mutex into the wait function. So another uh, question is that here we are using the while instead of, instead of the if uh, to wait for the condition to come true. So why do we need to use while here? So using the while is to prevent the sp spurious wake up which means that according to the standard, uh, the signal function may wake up multiple threads in, in a multi-core multi system. For example, when, you call, uh, when multiple thread is waiting, is added to the waiting queue for the condition variable, then when uh, one thread calls the signal, it will wake up all the threads inside the waiting queue. So sometimes we do not need to, we do not want to wake up all of them. We just want to wake up, wake up uh, one specific thread, then uh, it may be some problem because it will just simply wake up all the thread in the in the system, even if the uh, condition has not been true for some threads. So to uh, prevent from this, when we want to wake up only one target threads, then we can represent it with the condition. Then because the other uh, are also woken up, but they, but they detect that uh, their condition has not come true. So they will just use the while uh, loop to sleep again and to call the wait again until the condition has, has come true for them. So this is why we are using a while here instead of, instead of the if, because we are, if we are using if, then after the thread is woken up, even if it is not the target thread, then it will exit from the if. A statement and continue the execution. But that is not what we want. So using a while, uh, we can guarantee that even if it is woken up and it is not the target thread, then it will use the loop to loop again and also sleep again until uh, it is actually the target thread for, for, the, uh, for the condition signal. So in this lab, you also have, a, have an exercise so you need to uh, implement two functions, just like the p-thread and jo p -thread join and also p-thread exits, just like the example we showed in the previous slides. But different from that example, uh, your implementation need to work in the case where there are not more than one child threads. So inside this example, we only have one child threads uh, here and we just create one threads and also one main threads. But in that uh, assignment, in the exercise, you will have multiple threads. 
So in that case, you, uh, you need to modify this program so that you work in the case uh, with multiple threat, with more than one child threats. So we, I, will all, I, will, I will also open a link to the submission for this exercise after this lab uh, finish, so you can submit your work there. And that's all for this lab. So is there any questions about this condition variable? So if you have any questions about this lab, then you can uh, enter it in the chat. But if you do not have any question, then you can leave the uh, lab now. <laughs>